Hey everybody. Today we're doing some residual plots in R using the qplot command. In this vid, I'm mostly going to use base R functions. Um, I'm currently producing another vid on the broom package, which is a very standard way of doing things in R. Once that's ready, I'll throw a link up top here. Um, let's see here. In this vid, we're going to focus on the variables wind and temp from the air quality data set, which is built in with R. Here we're seeing daily air quality measurements in New York from May to September of 1973. Uh, so first of all, let's load up tidyverse. Again, the only function I'm really going to use here is um, from tidyverse is going to be qplot, but let's go ahead and load it all up anyway. Okay, so before we start doing any kind of modeling, we should graph our data. So let's get a qplot. And um, we want wind to be our explanatory variable. So how about air quality dollar wind? And for our response variable, we want air quality dollar temp. Of course, there are many syntaxes that will get this result. Um, we could do comma geome equals quote point, but we don't need that. R will default to a scatter plot when you give it two variables. Okay, there we go. We see we do have a, um, a linear relationship between the two variables. It's not particularly strong, but it is a linear relationship nonetheless. Um, let's quantify that. Let's get a correlation between these two variables. So I'll use exactly the same command, but now with the core correlation. And we can see negative 0.458. All right, um, since we do have a linear relationship, we can add a regression line to this plot. So let's take that qplot command that we have and add a geome smooth method is lm for linear model. And let's leave out the, the error ribbon. Great, so there's our regression line. Um, so now we're justified in putting together a, a linear model, actually getting the equation of that of that regression line. So um, let's just call it model. Let's not try and be too creative with this. We'll do LM and um, let's see here. First we put our response variable, which is temp tilde, and then our um, explanatory variable, which is wind. And then we explicitly say the name of the data frame. Again, there's other syntaxes that will work here just as well. One lovely thing about R, there's many right ways to do most tasks. Okay, um, we can get a summary for that model to see uh, lots of information about it. There we go. In particular, you can see the coefficients here, the intercept, 90.1349, the um, coefficient for the slope, negative 1.23. So the way that we interpret that is that for every um, unit that wind increases, the temperature will decrease by about 1.23 units. Um, again, if we look at the help file, we should be able to get the, the units here. So the wind is in miles per hour and the temperature is in degrees Fahrenheit. So very Amerocentric data set here. Okay, so... Um, Notice that we can explicit, we can um, directly get those coefficients out with the coef function, coefficients. And uh, if we put in the model, we get the intercept and the wind pulled right out. There's two other functions that are worth mention mentioning here. The first is um, the fitted values, fitted dot values. And if we put in our model, we're going to get a, a whole vector of all the fitted values. So the data frame has 153 rows. There's 153 different wind entries here. What we're seeing here is the predicted temp for each one of those. So for instance, if we wanted to, and let's want to, we can do a new column in our air quality data set. How about um, fitted? And, um, or pre maybe even I like predicted better. And uh, let's just let that be the fitted dot values from our model. And we can get a new view on the air quality here to see that new column. Um, in a very similar vein, we can get the residuals. So the command, as you might expect, is residuals. There they are. And we can append that to our data frame in exactly the same way. So 
So I'm just changing fitted values to residuals in both cases here. And that's, then let's have one more view of air quality. <laughs> there we go. So now we have predicted and residual values, the fitted and resi residual values. All right, great. So a residual plot puts residuals on the vertical axis and fitted values or predicted values on the x-axis, on the horizontal axis. In some introductory stats textbooks, you will sometimes see for simple linear regression the explanatory variable on the x-axis. The, the nice thing about putting predicted values on the x-axis is that that generalizes um, very directly to multiple regression. So it's good to get into this habit right away. So um, let's do it. Let's get another Q-plot. On the x-axis, we're going to want those um, predicted values. So it is, um, we could go directly for this data frame that I've showed you, but let's just do fitted dot values right here. Oops, sorry. Fitted values of the model. And then let's get the residuals of the model. And again, with um, the x and the y variable specified here, I will assume that I do want a scatter plot. Okay, so this is the residuals plot. You can see that I have the fitted values on the x-axis, the residuals um, from that model on the y-axis. The big idea with a residuals plot is that if there really is a linear relationship between the variables, and if the variance is constant um, between different input values, then this should be a cloud without any real slope. And we can verify that by putting in um, a regression line to this, geome smooth method equals quote lm se equals false and that will just be the horizontal line y equals zero um, here you can see there really is not a pattern to this data if there is a pattern it indicates that you don't fully have a linear relationship that your model um, is going to have some bias in it as a result of that okay so that's the basic way of doing a um, residual plot in r using qplot